Hello, Eric. Thank you so much for joining us today. Hi, Julie. Hi. Great to be here. Oh, thank you. So I wanted to talk with you because I interviewed a couple of, of your patients who were successful with you. And so I wanted to touch base with you just to see what you do with fertility clients and what your approach is. So um, I know you're an acupuncturist with over 20 years of experience in San Diego, California, and um, you have been specializing in working with fertility patients for pretty much most of that time. So you have a lot of experience working with women uh, in their 30s, in their 40s. And so can you kind of expand on what you do with clients, like what your focus is when you're working with women who are on the motherhood journey? Well, I try to find out what they're, what, what they're doing, what they've been doing up till this point to try to get pregnant, if they've been kind of casual about it, or if they've been, you know, what they've been trying and try to clarify, um, you know, what their diet, their lifestyle, what kind of exercises they've been doing, um, if they've been, uh, if they've already been seeing fertility doctors, where, where they're where they are, are in that journey, if they're already kind of committed or they're just kind of getting started in that area, because that will kind of determine how I'm going to work, be working with them. Um, you know, many of them come to me already sort of with one foot in the door in a uh, fertility clinic, um, getting testing done already, maybe already have done a cycle or two of IVF or IUI. So a lot of times these days, I'm already, they're kind of coming to me already, like somewhat starting already. So they've already been kind of exposed to IVF medications, fertility medications, um, Clomid. So they've already been kind of taking these types of medications and things um, before I'm even getting to start to see them. And do you, so... Do you work with uh, women who haven't gone that gone down that route uh, when they've hit their 40s? Or is that not so common for you? Um, I, I do, yes. There's still some out there that have not gone down that route. And maybe they haven't... haven't um, found someone committed person to commit with and uh, start a family with. And so they're just getting started. Um, so I do work with some people who are just kind of going completely natural. And that's really nice to just be able to kind of start with someone who hasn't even, you know, started going to hardcore Western fertility treatments yet. Is there an advantage to starting with you before they do the fertility treatments? Oh, yes, definitely. Because um, before they start, you know, before they start to work with them, our fertility doctors, you know, they get start to work with me, we can kind of approach things uh, from a holistic perspective, and I can kind of teach them about how Chinese medicine views fertility in the body. And we can kind of, um, kind of give them, let them kind of understand our approach to things and not let them get a lot of negative impressions in their head um, from what they may pick up about their own fertility, where they are, how, fer how fertile they are. So they can kind of start with a more positive um, approach, I think. No, that's great. Yeah, that's important for them to really believe in the process that they've chosen and the path that they've chosen, right? Mm-hmm. Because, right. yeah, I do see that, uh, you know, women who start off with fertility doctors right off the bat, especially women in their 40s, they tend to have a very negative impression of uh, their prognosis of their ability to be able to get pregnant and have a healthy baby. Um, when they don't work with someone uh, on, on, a, on a more natural side, on the holistic side. Mm -hmm. Yeah, they're kind of, you know, once they kind of like start that, they're kind of like r being rushed along and, you know, they're getting kind of categorized by their age really quickly and they're kind of on this very fast track. Mm -hmm. And usually the way we work, um, we kind of need more time to kind of really kind of rebuild the body's reserves, kind of assess the body's reserves and, re and rebuild them. And that takes some time, but it takes a few months at least. Um, and getting someone to just kind of come in 
and just start that slow process. It's, it's much harder to do that once they've already kind of like started working with a fertility clinic. How do you approach it with someone who's in their 40s and who feels the pressure of time already and they don't think that they can spend a few months preparing? How would you, how do you address that to them? That's a, that's a tough one because, um, yeah, they, they might be feeling that pressure. Um, and I, I try to let them know that, um, it just takes time to, you know, we've, you go through a whole life of eating certain foods, living a certain lifestyle, you know, sleeping a certain way, exposing yourself to toxins and stress. And it takes a certain amount of time to un undo that. And it just, you just can't do that in a few weeks. Right. Yeah. Also, a lot of clients already have a um, history, but often by the time that they come to me of failed cycles. Mm -hmm. So, uh, and I don't know if you do this, but I point out to them the pattern, you know, they've done X number of cycles. They, it hasn't worked. So they have to dramatically change what they have been doing in order to get dramatically different results. They can't expect sure. to just throw in, in your case, acupuncture, and you also do herbs, which we'll talk about in just a second, but to throw in the acupuncture is kind of like a last resort and expect it to make enough of a difference within a matter of weeks. This is more of a preparation and allowing their body time to absorb the effects to really be able to use use the benefits optimally that's right yeah this so, I, go ahead sorry i was gonna say that some of the, the some of the impressions that acupuncture can like instantly fix stuff is kind of out there you know and it's yeah. kind of um <laughs> yeah. yeah occasionally I, I mean, with pain yeah I, and i'm glad you brought that up because i think it's important for the both of us because i'm trained as an acupuncturist as well you know, people like to hear the stories and they hang on to the stories of how, uh, of how someone responded like super fast. And those are the exceptions. Those are definitely not the rule. Exactly. And so, you know, it'd be great, you know, be open to having instant success, but also be prepared for it to be a marathon and not just the sprint to the finish line. And mm -hmm. I tell, I tell people that it's like, yeah, you can hope you can hope for it to be successful right out of the gate, but more realistically, it's probably going to be a long process because it's you know I mean, like you said, they have to undo a lot of a lot of things that kind of put them in that position in the first place, and with exactly. uh, with not eating nutritious food, uh, you know, not being emotionally very healthy, not taking care of themselves physically, emotionally, and spiritually. And that can't be done in a matter of weeks. So, exactly. yeah, um, I, I know because I know you personally, I know you're really skilled in herbs. And so you actually are the person that I turn to uh, myself for herbs. So can you kind of um, talk a little bit about using herbs for, uh, for, for women who are on the motherhood journey and um, how you use the herbs, because a lot of women, it seems like think of herbs as supplements where it's like, just give me the formula or give me an herb and what herbs will help improve my fertility. So can you address kind of that approach where it's just get it off the shelf and I'll take it and then it's gonna solve my problem? Well, you know, the, the way, the way we do herbs in Chinese medicine, it's not really like an off the shelf type of approach. Um, I, I want to assess the individual and see where, where their body is off balance. What, you know, what's missing, what's lacking, what's what, where blockages could be and find the correct herbal formula to address that. And if I can't find the correct herbal formula, then I'll, I'll make one or customize a formula to, to that approach. So it's more of a personal, it's, you know, I don't really give the same exact herbs to every person that comes in. Um, it's going to be more of a personalized approach to everybody. Everybody's going to have a little bit different, um, different needs. What um, are those different needs? Like how, what goes into how you factor what herbs a person takes? 
Well, wow, that's a, that's a huge subject, of course. <laughs> <laughs> <It's> superficial. <laughs> well, it's just, it's because you know people go online. Women go online, right? They're doing their research, which they should be doing, doing their due mm -hmm. diligence as to like what other therapies they can or st and strategies and treatments that they can pursue while you know while on this journey. And so they may come across some article, some blog, or something about herbal medicine. And then, and they see the names of the herbs, whether they're individual herbs or herbal formulas. And then they think, oh, well, this is what I need. Cause that's kind of how supplements work, but herbs mm -hmm. don't work that way. So just kind of like giving, um, helping women understand what it is that makes it so different from supplements. Why, why we can't approach herbs in the same way that we can just take a supplement off the shelf and just expect it to work right in a similar manner yeah like with a, with a with like a supplement or a vitamin we, we all know we need like oh we need like this many milligrams of vitamin d or we need a certain amount of b and every, we kind of can kind of like standardize that and say you know if you're on this amount you'll be good to go with herbs though there really isn't a standardized there really isn't a standardized amount there's a range that that could be given to each person depending on what they would what they would need so for example like all women need a lot of good healthy blood for the reproductive system and we know dong wei dong wei is like a really famous herb for blood and there's a lot of information out there online about dong wei a lot of it's a lot of it's not right or misleading online so you can't go buy a lot of stuff that you read online but to take that as an example, um, Dong Wei um, has certain properties of moving the blood, uh, stimulating new blood production, and you can add other herbs to it, combine it to increase that effect, um, to increase like more blood production, or you can add some herbs to that to increase blood moving effect. So, for example, some women may be blood deficient, anemic, and they may need, we need to build that blood up. Um, some women may have like blockages with blood, like they have a lot of, um, their blood flow is not working right. They have like really clotty blocked menses and their issues is with um, stagnation. So and we're that, gonna wanna- that like, also applies for women with endometriosis, which is very common. Yes, absolutely. Yeah. So we might wanna be combining that with other herbs that will provide more movement uh, of the blood. So there's a lot of flexibility built in with the herbs in what exactly you're trying to do. And, and I look at the whole cycle, the whole menstrual cycle as sort of like, okay, so you don't give the same herbs generally the entire time. So you'll need those moving herbs during around the period time. But after the period is over, you need those building herbs again, because you've lost all that blood and you want to start rebuilding that lining and that lost blood and so you're kind of shifting to a totally different mode at that point and um depending on on the woman's uh, how, how deficient they are they might need a lot of blood tonics in that formula mm -hmm. to take after the period's over yeah. so we're kind of like during the cycle we may be giving like three or even four different herbal formulas depending on what that person needs so it's not kind of like not very close to um vitamin supplement in that way yeah. it's really amazing how the herbal medicine has developed over thousands of years and it's it's just extremely elegant and it's an art it's definitely yes. an art that is you know that you just can't read from a book and <laughs> and know how to apply it you, like you you learn how to apply it with clinical practice and this is where you step in and where you're you're definitely a master at so even, and so for women, and I believe you do offer um, online consultations for women who don't have access to uh, herbalists in their area, you do work with women um, online, right? Uh, to mm -hmm. be able to give them herbs and which is, a, which is a great service to offer because there aren't as many, there are more acupuncturists without herbal experience than there are acupuncturists with herbal experience and herbal yes. knowledge. Yeah. And so, and, and I always encourage uh, my clients to work with acupuncturists and preferably those 
with acupuncturists to have herbal experience because that just adds another dimension to the treatment that that comes with the acupuncture so it's like you get more modalities in one in one person in from one practitioner and so right. it's just, yeah it's a wonderful way um, are there any final thoughts that you uh, want to share with women in their 40s who are on the motherhood journey before we sign off well i would i would um recommend if you you know, if looking for an acupuncturist um to be to give to devote enough time to the treatments to work like as we were talking before you want to give it at least a minimum of three months and when you're in your 40s i would expect to give it more time than that like three months would be kind of like a minimum amount of bare time. minimum, bare minimum. <laughs> like bare minimum <laughs> anyone who gets pregnant within those three months is extraordinarily lucky mm -hmm. <laughs> like extremely lucky. <laughs> thank you so much eric for your time Eric Hollander, uh, acupuncturist and herbalist in San Diego, California. I'm going to provide your contact information in the description box below. So if anyone wants to reach out to him, please feel free to do so. He is uh, just a fantastic acupuncturist and herbalist. I have him treat me <laughs> whenever I need anything. Fortunately, it's been a while since I've needed to go in. So <laughs> I've been really good. I've been great. And, and thanks to you because you've taken care of me every single time. So thanks so much for your time, Eric. Oh, you're very welcome. Thanks for having me on. Absolutely. <laughs>